Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. Hello Tauruses, I owe you the biggest apology because I had to take your reading down last month. I just felt really uncomfortable with it. I was talking about kind of, I'm just going to say what's going on in the news and sort of globally speaking, the big thing that's going on in the news globally. And um, I got quite sweary, I got quite opinionated. I don't know if this is something that you've been experiencing, whether it's you that's been quite opinionated about this or, which I'm not saying that's a bad thing, it's a good thing it's, it's a good reason to be opinionated, right? When something really atrocious is happening, you know, however you see the situation, you know, war is an atrocious thing. Um, and I just felt a bit cautious because I don't like... I don't really want to get too political when I do these readings. It's, an, it's not about my political opinions, right? And when I'm channeling, sometimes I pick up on the thoughts and opinions of the people I'm channeling. It's not always necessarily my feelings. So I felt really uncomfortable. I was kind of like, what have I said? How will people perceive me? If it's... So it could even be that you want to speak out about something. It doesn't have to be what's in the news, right? It could be you want to speak out about something. I feel like it could be... You have this thing in your reading about like having a big epiphany, uh, almost like it's, it's like not believing in God and then seeing God manifest in front of you and being like you know, I believe in God now. It's, it's kind of like you'd, ha you'd seen a miracle or you'd had this big epiphany was the way it was coming through in November. Um, so maybe you're in the midst of this, maybe you're thinking, what is she talking about? I don't know. Uh, but like I say, um, you could be feeling a bit like maybe even biting your tongue or holding back or deleting posts because it's like, you know, if there's a big hot topic, especially on like social media, if there's a big hot topic and people are very passionate about it and they have very strong opinions, even though you may have something to say or a point to make, you know, it can be quite scary putting yourself out there because, you know, you can face so much backlash from the people with a different opinion than you. Um, and it's interesting that I was kind of, I think the main point I wanted to make in the Taurus reading for myself personally was um, what's happening globally right now in the news. It's not about a certain religion versus another religion or a group of people versus another group of people. They, it's not actually about that. What's actually happening is there's greedy rich people who are um, and bad politicians, right? On both sides, whenever there's a dispute, whenever there's war, I blame the politicians because a good politician should be negotiating, speaking to the people, you know, um, finding common ground, um, negotiating peace because peacetime is good for the people, right? And if you're the leader of a country, you have a duty of care to your people to keep them safe and protected. And the way that you resolve conflict is through negotiations, peacekeeping, um, you know, finding common ground, um, accepting things. Um, you know, giving ground, making that, that's a uh, careful about, again, I worry about how, what I'm saying is going to be interpreted. You know, when I say giving ground, I mean, um, like, like finding a middle ground, finding a common ground and kind of like reaching an agreement. That's what I'm talking about. Um, and it's not about taking what you want and it's not about bullying your way into, you know, getting a certain outcome. Um, and again, I am not taking sides. I am saying, um, I, well, I am taking sides. I'm siding with the common people who are just trying to go to work, raise the kids, do the job, have a family, have a life, have fun, you know, working hard and just living the life and trying to be safe and look after the people that they love. That's whose side I'm on. And that those people come in all different races, shapes, sizes, you know, lots of different demographics there. Who, the, the people who I think are the enemy are the rich, greedy people who make money from selling arms, who, uh, you know, are stealing from, you know, people who are already struggling, uh, you know, the people who are in power and have power, the people who actually have the power to make big political decisions, they're the enemy right now because, in my opinion, because if your country gets to a point where you're at war and there's this huge conflict, then you know, they've not done their job as politicians to kind of like broker peace and make deals, which is what I think a good leader should be doing. So, um, yeah, I think that, and again, I, I've got a humanities degree. I study, I've studied war. I've studied history. I've studied rhetoric, which, um, is the, 
what politicians say to make people think that war is a good idea. And a lot of the times, again, I was talking about some this with somebody recently, and I said, if you look at any any conflict throughout history, why does it start? Because there's greedy people who are going to make money out of it. Um, you know, 99 times it's because of either people are scared or people are greedy. And both of those things, I think, are the devil's work, right? That's not God's, you know, it's not on with Christian soldiers right here. That is not, you know, that's the devil's work, I think, if, you, if you're if acting from a place of greed or fear. So, um, yeah, I, again, let's take race and religion and, poli you know, and demographics out of it, because I don't think it's about that. I think it's, a, I think, you know, the harm is being done by greedy people who are not, doing their job properly and that's my opinion on it so yeah I took the reading down because I did feel like you know people might interpret what I was saying wrong um you may fe be feeling a lot of pressure as well to kind of speak out um and I think this is something that I'm seeing um social media influencers are, say are, are experiencing where you know some of them might be confused or scared to speak out and they may have strong opinions but you know they they may not think that their platform is the appropriate place or they're the appropriate place to person to speak out on these things and yet um people are putting a lot of pressure on you know social media influencers to to have the right opinion although the right opinion is contested so I don't know I think lay off you know lay off normal people just trying to go about the business and let's you know aim our anger and frustrations at the people who actually have the power to um to to make big decisions right like should we I don't know. Anyway, like moving swiftly on, I did have to say that I I, I needed to owe you an apology and explain what had happened with that. Um, again, I just sort of feel like I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I think it's a horrible situation that shouldn't be happening. Basically, um, and I'm I'm just a person on the internet, right? I'm just one person on the internet. Um, anyway, the, uh, there's also this message about progress being made. Uh, so when I started the reading, it was uh, 1234, which is 1234. So um, my guides are showing me that if there's a situation for, for you, Taurus, that you feel is a bit stuck, there's no movement there. Because um, when I was deleting my old videos off my phone, it got stuck at 80%. But then I looked again and it was 100%. It just hadn't... It was like the progress was being made. It just didn't look like progress was happening, right? It looked like it stalled. So there could be a situation like this for you kind of uh, towards the end of the year where um, a situation feels like it's stalled, but there is movement and progress being made. It just may not be visible to you. So I want to say that's a reassuring message, hopefully. Um, I asked my guides, how does Taurus know that this reading's for them? Um, and I got some letters and you can see what the letters are. It's really funny to me because it's like, how will Taurus know the reading's for them? And they're spelling out Taurus. That's what it looks like to me. But these could be your initials. They could mean something else to you. Uh, TA is making me think Territorial Army. Again, this military theme coming up. AU is making me think of like Australia or um, like Austria or somewhere like that. Uh, but yeah, take it as it resonates. You can reorder the letters. Uh, you've also got 111, so that could mean something to you. And you've got the letters away, green and pit. Again, because TA is giving me like territorial army uh, and away. Um, there's something strange with that, right? Because the territorial army is normally um, the home army, right? They stay on their own soil. So it's almost like somebody who's in the territorial army, who's green, right? Because they've never been they've never been to war before. This is kind of the scenario that's popping into my head. But, you know, it's your reading. If it's take what resonates and ignore what I'm saying if you're getting something else. Uh, but, yeah, it's sort of making me think, you know, somebody... It's kind of giving me the idea of, like, someone who's joined the territorial army so they can, they can protect their, their home. And then, um, you know, they actually get recruited or um, like what's the conscripted, like because they're going to conscribe from the territorial army first and then they get sent into war. But then the green, right, the the kind of wet behind their ears. Uh, so that was kind of making me think of that. And then I don't know, pit was kind of giving me like pit in, pit in your stomach or something. Um, maybe somebody's in the ter ter territorial army, they're scared of getting conscripted. You know, it's not what I signed up for. Could be all these different things. Um, I want to move on from that. Uh, the song that came through from you is uh, Quidate. Quidate. I'm sorry, I am not good at Spanish or uh, Spanish speaking, uh, Spanish 
root languages, right? Um, so, but it's by um, a producer called Bizarrap. He's like a DJ producer, music producer. He's from Argentina. Arge I guess why am I saying everything funny? Argentina. He's Argentine. He's Argentinian. <laughs> Um, so uh, that country could be something for somebody. Um, I'm not laughing at the country. I'm laughing at my inability to speak, <laughs> basically. Um, and it's um, also by the the rapper on that that song is Quevedo, Quevedo, um, who is a Spanish rapper. Um, it's very very. It was it was a song that kind of blew up. It was really really popular. Uh, so uh, there could be something about something suddenly. Um, suddenly getting a lot of traction um yeah and then you it's the remix version by tiesto who's a dutch kind of uh dj remix uh producer person so uh the song's actually about a guy who uh, he kind of meets a girl on a night out asks her to dance they have a great night together they spend spend the night together and he's so kind of the funny thing is the song that was playing before this was caught up by usher you know caught up got me feeling it cut up i don't know what it is but it seems you got me and it's kind of like uh so the two songs kind of fit together the idea of kind of like you know the guy is out with his homies <laughs> rolling with the homies um yeah he's out with his kind of bros and there's this girl and he's kind of like you know doing his thing you know being the big old grizzly bear and uh yeah then kind of uh getting a bit like you know really really actually kind of liking her a lot and being like I want to do I want to spend more time with this girl I want to take her around the world with me so uh I don't know if any of you are traveling around the world but uh you could be this kind of situation could come up it could come up for you it could, could be coming up for maybe somebody in your friendship group especially if you kind of um I mean I don't know who's watching my videos but it was giving me the impression of like a group of lads um you know like you know bros before you know that saying and then like you know when teenage lads kind of uh they start to kind of like break away from the group and they get girlfriends and they start going out less and then they start a family and kind of like seeing each other a bit less so it has that feeling of kind of um maybe a conflict with i want to spend all my time with this girl because i've, I've you know this is this is the one kind of thing but then kind of like not seeing the guys as much take it as it resonates leave it if it doesn't i don't know who i'm reading for so the what I'm asking Taurus, uh, this being kind of like the December reading is what do we need to leave behind in 2023? Like what is spirit saying, you know, enough of that, that phase is over, let go. Um, what do we need to embrace more of? So what are we doing that's right? What do we need to kind of like keep doing or stick with uh, kind of going into 2024 to make it kind of like the best year? So I'm going to go ahead and ask those questions. What does Taurus leave, need to leave behind in 2023? The sun. I mean, I don't know, maybe you're going from a place that's really sunny to a place that's cold. Um, it could also be something that makes you really, really happy. Um, you know, you need to leave something behind that makes you happy, which is, you know, if that's the case, there's always a reason for it. Spirit will have a plan. Um, okay, what do we need to embrace more of for 2024? What, do we, what does Taurus need to do more of? What does Taurus need to stick with? What is in store for Taurus in 2024? The Thinking Woman, Angel of Strength, and Deceit. So it's saying do this more, right? It's saying what should you do? That's a strange message, isn't it? With Cornucopia on the bottom. So there could be this could be you. They could be saying to you, um, maybe stop going with your gut, right? Maybe, you know, if you if you've been following your happiness and just doing what feels good, maybe you need to put a bit more thought into what you're doing. You need to be a bit more strategic. I'm going to read because I don't think my guides would tell you to do anything actually harmful or bad. Um, but the thinking woman and deceit, it's giving me kind of king, of, uh, king or queen of swords energy, which to me would be about strategy. Um, so it could just be about kind of um, playing your cards quite close to your chest or, uh, you know, hiding your motives or hiding your actions because, you know, it could even be the sort of thing of like, maybe you're coming into a bit of money, right? Maybe you've, uh, maybe you're doing something that's very strategic and it could be financial perhaps. Um, you know, maybe you've, 
maybe you've done a lot of research she's kind of giving the thinking woman she's kind of giving uh queen of swords queen of pentacles kind of like she she has a lot of knowledge right she has a lot of wisdom which is interesting because the library and the owl was just on the underlying for me i asked for myself what do i need to know for to do taurus's reading and it gave me the library and the owl so um yeah that's kind of like athena energy so you know sometimes you do sometimes you are surrounded by people who don't have you know best intentions towards you um you know for example say you were doing a job and you had earned a bit of money and you were you know putting some money aside and you go blabbing about that and telling everybody what you're doing people might start cozying up to you like oh you buy the drinks tonight you've got loads of money you know you're rich come on you get the round in and like taking advantage so it could just be i know it says deceit and it looks i really don't like this card actually um but it could be more about especially with you Taurus being a wealthy sign right uh Taurus is known to be um associated with um like physical pleasure and physical pleasure often comes with like you know the money to buy nice things or the money to go to a nice restaurant so uh money being a factor be you being an earth sign that's all about kind of like a uh, pleasurable experience because you're ruled by venus um could be something like that i don't know but the angel's strength as well it feels like stick to the plan stick to the strategy it might be quite hard for you as well to to maybe play your cards quite close to your chest um it may be that you with the sun card being kind of like leo energy they could be saying something like you uh you're a generous person perhaps perhaps we've got this lion here as well so do check your full birth chart and do see if you've got um leo placements i'd be inclined to say it could be leo mercury um because um leo mercury likes to be generous with the friends uh they like to spoil the friends um you know leo venus uh, leo moon these kind of things leo mars um yeah but it's feeling like maybe you've been very generous you know you've been enjoying um it's making me think as well like sometimes you know like um if you work for a certain place and that place closes down uh you get like redundancy pay so you can get like a big lump sum right so it's kind of like you know you've you've been enjoying your money you know going on holidays spending money on the people your friends your family spoiling them but it could be saying especially with cornucopia here right an appreciation an envy yeah there you go there it is look yeah be not her maid since she, since she is envious it always gives me romeo and juliet that card um yeah people are jealous of what you've got because you've got a lot that's what that's what you're saying um okay yeah so now the deceit card's making me think of um i used to work somewhere and uh, people were stealing um, and we knew that things were being stolen right we could see the money going missing or the products going missing um, and it happened a few times uh, with a few different people over the years um, and so you know what we had to do was be strategic and kind of say um, I think first of all we say we know some stuff's going missing so whoever's doing it stop but if it continued um we'd kind of you know have strategies in place to kind of like divide and conquer a little bit to work out who was doing which shifts when things were going missing when things weren't going missing and kind of like narrowed it down till we kind of like could see where could, we could you know had evidence to say who was doing it basically um so it's making me think of that as well almost like um you know the cheese in the trap uh, it's making me think of, like mouse trap right which isn't nice for me because I, I associate with mice <laughs> but it's kind of like if we put the cheese in the trap will the who's gonna go for it okay let's find out more about the sun to the sea and yang okay so it's a bit of a strange conflict here so to the sea talks about going with the flow kind of letting the universe take you uh, on an adventure kind of not holding too tightly to the reins and trying to control a situation but just kind of seeing what life has in store for you and then we have yang which is the opposite right yang is about taking the lead taking ownership um stepping up stepping forward controlling a situation 
So you've got this strange conflict coming through here, which is hard for me to read. So I am going to have to pull more cards on that. Being asked to let it go. Relate. No, you're being asked to let go. It's like you're being asked to let go of the reins, but also take the reins. It could be two different situations. I said, what do you need to give up? You need to give up the sun to the sea. It's like sun, sun and sea. Maybe you are having too many holidays, right? Maybe you need to kind of uh, save a bit of money here, but also give up yang. I mean, yang is masculine energy. And this is what I was talking about with the songs, right? Kind of like spending too much time with the boys. I don't know, how, I don't know what your gender is, so take it as it resonates, leave it if it doesn't. But... Um, if this is your reading, it should be making sense by now. So it's kind of like spending too much time with masculine energy. Let's put it that way. Um, and being being too masculine, right? Having too masculine an approach to life. And you are a feminine sign, being an earth sign Taurus. So um, maybe you need to be more yin. It, the way I would explain it, what I'm kind of getting from it is like a situation where you just, you know, it definitely feels like young man energy. So again, it could be somebody around you. Kind of like, say you are, um, you know, early 20s, late teens, early 20s, and you go on a lot of boys' holidays kind of thing. And, you know, you're very kind of like, and it doesn't have to be boys' holidays, I'm just giving you an example. But it's kind of like, um, you know, you're in that kind of culture, right? You're in that kind of, you've got those kind of attitudes and the, you know, the way you carry yourself and the way, you know, the way you are when you're with the boys is the way it's coming through. It's like me and the boy is going to mess you up. <laughs> um, but um, at the same time, like, you know, young men like that can, in a big group as well, it can sometimes be, let's not be responsible. Let's, let's go out and play. Let's, uh, let's go on a beach holiday. Let's not save our money for a mortgage. That's boring. Let's go and, you know, let's go spend, let's go and enjoy life and have fun. And, you know, so it's got this feeling of kind of like life rambling, like being quite aimless and, but also being a very masculine energy. That's the way I would explain that. So I don't know. We'll pull more cards. And what do, what do they need to embrace more of? Whoa, you're getting a lot of cards, Taurus. Thinker. Again, look, thinking woman, the thinker. So it's almost like you're being told to give up the lack of thought, right? The lack of strategy. You know, this idea of kind of like life rambling and go towards... So it feels like there's boys who just kind of like are out to have fun, but maybe a specific woman. And you could be the specific woman, right? Just take it as it resonates. Um, who is more strategic, right? They're a thinker. And then chaos and conflict. So there's conflict with this. So you've got yin. Yeah, there you go. Be less yang, be more yin. Peace and mending. Yeah, absolutely. So again, don't worry too much about your gender. Uh, it's, what's really funny is when I did this reading for me, um, I had the yin and yang card here. And I was like, what does that mean? Does that mean I have to be less balanced? So yours is more clear though, because you're definitely being told less yang energy, less of what you would think of as being more typically like masculine, domineering, uh, aggressive, uh, confrontational, um, controlling energy. And that's not me saying all men are like that. I'm just, again, it's, 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 I, tarot and energy is different to gender and sex. Just putting that out there. Um, and then the yin energy, which is more about peace mending which is so funny because remember what i was talking about at the start of the reading about about uh conflict because you literally have chaos and conflict right and i think chaos and conflict happens when there's no thought and there's just knee-jerk responses so it's kind of like hey you're scared this thing is threatening you go and fight it right it's very it's very of the id right it's very kind of uh uh, lower vibrational kind of almost animalistic it's instinctual right it's more kind of um ah oh, scary thing hit it you know caveman like uh where when you bring the thought right when you bring the thinkers into the chaos and the conflict you know the people who um you know question the narrative or you know compare and contrast different things and they find the the flaws in what's been said and they break things down and you know say hey let's look at this let's look at this historical context exactly like what i was doing at the start of the reading right where it's kind of like 
okay, we've been in these situations before, right? This isn't the first war the world has ever had. What did we do last time to make things better? And what did we do last time that made things worse, right? So it's kind of like, let's, let's bring, let's brainstorm, right? Let's sit down, discuss it and have some thought. So it does feel very kind of id and super ego. The id is very, like I say, it's kind of like caveman energy. Oh, scared, hit, oh. Um, or run, hide. Um, where the thinking woman energy or the thinking man, again, I don't really place a gender on this energy. I would say, however, it's very Aquarius and it's very of the super ego. So if you understand id, ego and super ego, then that can give you a bit more context. Um, it is more... Um, yeah, you're definitely being asked, to, whatever the situation is, you are being told to be more strategic, to to think think for yourself more as well. Don't just be told, you know, what to think. But analyse it, right? Step back and analyse it. Is this coming from a, face of, a place of fear? Am I being reactive? Or am I taking a step back from a situation? You know, bringing in a little bit of, uh, a bit of thought to the situation and kind of analyzing what I'm feeling. So that's the difference. It's like, I'm scared, I'm gonna react, right? I'm, I'm scared, I'm just gonna react instinctively, or I'm scared, hang on, why am I scared? What's scaring me? Like, you know, let's analyze the different outcomes. You know, let's put, put a plan and a strategy in place if those outcomes happen. And then you actually, in doing that, while you feel perhaps like you're giving your power away by not reacting, you are actually claiming power in a more um, yin-like way, right? It's a more, um, it's a higher vibrational, and I'm not saying women are more high vibrational to men. I'm saying it's a, it's a more cognitive uh, way of, of analyzing the situation. So yeah, you're being told stop stop waving it about Taurus, right? Stop punching walls, stop, you know, thinking that violence is going to fix this. What's going to fix it is taking control of your own mind and looking for peaceful solutions. Okay. Really want to pull a card on that deceit. Let's get more information. So what are you giving up? What's getting left behind in 2023? F you 2023. Wealthy man. I think it's what I was talking about at the beginning in the reading. The, it's like the 1%, right? The people who are out to out to get what they want, out to take what they want, okay? There's something about you in this as well. I'm going to say with it being Taurus energy, the wealthy man could definitely be Taurus energy. Um, I want to look up... Okay, so I just want to look up a specific... UK. I'm not going to say who it is. You'll be able to hear how many letters they had in the name though. I wonder if this person is okay, that's interesting. I'm looking up the birth chart. Um, you can tell a lot of about a politician by uh their birth chart. Hmm. I worry about, uh, you know, people like politicians who are, they're not Taurus, which is interesting. Um, I may need to kind of look at this, into that further. I worry sometimes about Taurus politicians and Taurus businessmen because uh, depending on the placements, um, especially like Mars in Taurus, um, it can be very, very material minded, very much like how much money can I make out of this situation? Capricorn as well can be like this sometimes. Um depending on the placements again i'm not saying all tauruses are like this uh, i'm just because i'm reading for taurus energy and not taurus in, interesting you've got poverty and community look at that just accidentally fell that way right i just knocked it and it fell that way concern you know not all wealthy people are bad though this is a thing as well you know oh you know a lot of people come into wealth and they do a lot of good with it they're like i you know i've been blessed now i have the opportunity to do good with it you know i'm it's making me think of like like a musical character or something is there someone like that? like scrooge it's like scrooge oh god concern coughing house bad health yeah it feels like scrooge you know how like he was selfish and cruel um and you know his workers were suffering and then he kind of like turned around 
because of he had this and he did right he had an epiphany like your your reading is is the story of like scrooge right and this is like tiny tim and then he was like don't worry i'm gonna buy you christmas dinner i'm gonna do this right i've got like i'll put on the big spread <laughs> And then, like, he's, you know, people are appreciated for that. Instead of being envious, you know, that's the situation, right? It's kind of like, if he's sat up there in his ivory tower keeping it all to himself and he's got, you know, the big house, you know, all the lights on, warm, you know, big dinner, it smells really good, crackling fire, you can smell the real fire. And then Tiny Tim's out there freezing to death, trying to be, trying to do his job as a, a chimney sweep on Christmas Eve. I know that's not the literal story, but I'm, I'm telling a story now. It's kind of like he's going to look into that warm window and be jealous, right? And be envious and be like, well, what I work, I work so hard and I have nothing to show for it. Why does that guy get spun around and like have all that when I, I, why don't I deserve that? You know what? I'm going to Robin Hood this. I'm going to take it, right? So what I would do if I was smart and in that situation, I would, um, it's funny because someone was talking to me about something like this, um, a situation just like this um where you know if i had that kind of money and wealth and you know i was blessed like this the right thing to do would be um you know to to share that with my workers or to uh, be charitable right and share this with others and make everybody feel warm because if everybody's included in this if everybody feels appreciated right if tiny tim comes in and feels appreciated and um you know i you know, like they share in the success, then they'll feel less envious. I think that's kind of the the way that I'm reading that at the moment. Contract underneath that. So tell me more about this, please. What's this? Yeah, toil and labour. It has the feeling of like, um, yes, appreciating kind of, doesn't it have the feeling of kind of like, and I'm not saying, you might be this, right? You might be this person. And in which case, Taurus, if you've been really work, working hard and you're like, why don't I have anything to show for it? Why are these other people here, you know, just swanning around, like living off their inheritance or something like that, you know, off daddy's money? Um, you know, like, hey, look at me. I'm this great businessman. Or, you know, all it took was one small investment um, a gift from my dad of a million dollars, which I invested wisely based on the advice that I was given by dad's financial advisors. Like, look at what a great businessman I am. It's like, well, no, you've, you've had opportunities that other people haven't, right? So, you know, you could be the person working really hard and thinking, why, why don't I get those, um, opportunities and privileges? So again, just take it as it resonates. Feels a bit, does feel a bit like Les Miserables or, you know, Scrooge or um, like Cinderella, right? It does have a feeling a bit like that where, or even um, I was talking about Far and Away, Nicole Kidman in Far, Far and Away, and he's just like, you spineless little fraction of a man. <laughs> I love that line. And marriage. Oh, that's interesting. It, it sort of feels a bit like, you know, a secret millionaire, you know, where they go and they kind of like live in poorer communities for a bit and see what life is like for them. And then they get this perspective of like, well, I thought these people were just lazy, but actually they're incredibly hardworking and life is really tough for them and I want to help them out. I wonder if there's like an element of that. That would explain why deceit's there, right? If you were like secret millionaire... You know, you wouldn't really want to go walking around in your finest clothes in a poorer area because, you know, that might make you some sort of target because people will be jealous. And it's almost offensive, right? If 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 you go into a really rundown neighbourhood where people are struggling, like, you know, struggling to feed the kids and you go in wearing, like, your diamonds, your, your top hat, you know, and you go swaggering around looking all cocky, you know, people are going to get mad, you know? It's, it is almost, uh, sen you know, dissensitive. Dis the tower. So this tower in the Lenormand deck talks about um, institutions, uh, sort of government, schools, church, 
um, it's like the room where it happens, if you know the, um, the Hamilton reference. Uh, so this is the place where it happens. This is somewhere that the wealthy man would be familiar with. So to, to me, that could be like the Houses of Parliament, right? The wealthy man in the Houses of Parliament. And this is what we're leaving behind in 20... You know, this is what's getting left behind in 2023. He's not getting taken forward to 2024. So take that however it resonates. Six of... Uh, I'd read this as the Six of Swords as well here. The Six of um, Spades. So... Uh, yeah, I would say that's definitely moving on from that. It's almost like turning your back on a system that's not working because it doesn't work for everybody. So it, it actually, this reading strangely has the feeling of what's been coming through for Capricorn and Aquarius a lot. I talk quite a lot about how uh, Pluto, this big generational planet that, that has these um, cycles that run for many, many years, right? They're big uh, collective cycles. They affect, you know, a big community of people globally and uh, so it's almost like time's up for the Pluto and Capricorn generation or not the generation right the Pluto and Capricorn um phase um and we're going into because this is Aquarius energy the Aquarius uh the Pluto and Aquarius phase like things are going to change these people are no longer in favor right the favor uh, spiritually and astro astrologically is going to swing to um, a different way of being and there's the harvest so I was saying quite a lot in the last set of readings um, I've said it on and off that I was being shown I was being shown this basically I was being there's a really old, um, like, fragment of text from, um, I think it's ancient Greece, where uh, somebody's advising uh, kind of a younger man, you know, don't raise your head too high over the, the top, you know, don't fly too close to the sun kind of thing. You know, if you were in a field of wheat, you don't want to be the wheat that grows the highest because when the farmer comes to collect the wheat, you're going to be the first to get the chop, right? So it's kind of like... Um, they were showing me this and uh, in one of the readings they were talking about the one percent right the one percent who have all the power who make all the decisions who um, you know steal pensions you know and then get a lordship um, so those people the, the greedy the greedy one percent what I was being shown and again I was um, this in a vision, like symbolically, like the 1% getting the chop. Um, I don't think it's like a... I mean, I think if you look into it, I think... Um, and you look at the kind of astrological cycles, I think the last time we were in a cycle like this was kind of like French Revolution, um, which again, like... I don't know, I wouldn't like to be the 1% right now. I would definitely be looking at ways to uh, make things better for everyone else. Another way it came through is like, if you build a pyramid, right? If you're at the top of the pyramid and you've built that pyramid on the backs of um, others and the bottom rung of the pyramid crumbles, the whole thing's coming down. So if you're not taking care of the little people at the bottom, your ivory tower is very quickly going to fall. <sighs> Big reading, Taurus. I don't know what to say. I don't know why it's coming through for you. I do know why it's coming through for you. I think you're getting these messages, which are hard messages, right? Um, I don't think it's a personal reading. I think a lot of you coming to this reading are just probably absolutely lovely people. You're probably the ones who are kind of working really hard and, you know, uh, suffering for it. I know, I know, um, you know, a couple of Tauruses who've, yeah, a few different Tauruses throughout my life who have worked very, very hard for what they have, right? They really earned it and they really do deserve it. And they haven't exploited other people or taken advantage, you know, but money has been a motivational force for them. Um, so like I say, um, I think it's more about the how, you know, how you, on your rise to the top, as you make your fortune, how do you treat other people? 
I mean, the sun as well, it's making me think of like, you know, the Sun King, like, what is it, Louis the 14th, is it? The sun is yang energy. I mean, this would be moon energy. If this is sun energy, this would be moon, more feminine. Tell me to the, about to the sea. What does that mean? There you go. That's what I was saying. This is why it's coming through for you, Taurus, uh, because your card, your major arcana card in the tarot is the Hierophant card. And the Hierophant card is, it is this energy, right? It is the people who make, make the laws and, you know, they pass the edicts and, uh, you know, they... The, 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 the people who hold power basically with Herifin, it can it's kind of like church and state sort of thing um yeah it's coming through really really strongly um and i think this is why it's coming through so it's not that it's your personal reading it's that there's um big messages coming through for Herifin energy Tor which is taurus energy at this time um you know to it's almost like game game over you know it's like almost like so what I'm seeing is um, I don't like the phrase. This is kind of like um, you know the phrase will give you enough rope to. So it, it's like um, the reason why these things have been allowed to happen. I think by the universe is because the the um, the exploitativeness of certain. And I'm not saying any one specific person, right? But there are people, there are people who kind of rule the world and have a lot of money and have a lot of influence who are um, cruel and selfish and they don't care about the people that they're hurting on the ground, right? Uh, they don't care about the tiny Tims who might pay, maybe need an operation and the parents who are working hard to try and raise those medical bills, right? Because I don't know, like... All they care about is like, how much money am I going to spend? How much money am I going to make by forcing Tiny Tim's family to to work themselves to death so they can get that operation right? So it's it's those people who need to fear now because it's almost like it's been allowed to be so bad because it had to be really seen and it had to be inexcusable and it had to be overt and obvious and clear so that there's no. You know, there's no wriggling out of it almost. It's kind of like, let them get away with it. Let them line the pockets so that when the flood comes, they're the ones that are, um, you know, have the hard, hard, hardest time swimming. Does that make sense? So a lot, sometimes stuff comes through as like metaphor and an analogy. Even me, uh, the dog days are over. <laughs> uh, Florence and the Machine. Um... And I've been saying this since I started doing readings, and here it is. Tell me about deceit. Why, why is Taurus being asked to continue to be deceitful or hold on to deceit in 2024? Why does that make sense? Which way up? I really need to know. It feels like maybe get, avoiding being stabbed in the back, avoiding a betrayal, but also not betraying others. It feels like there's information being gathered about a work situation or a collaborative situation. This feels like, you know, the spy or the information collection. I, I'm really drawn to the hat today. They look almost like, it almost looks like a police hat. I think that like I said about that workplace that I was once at where um, it's kind of like put the cheese in the trap and then um, if people that's a bad example I think it's kind of like you know we'll say we'll say we know people are stealing stop stealing and if they continue to do it and they take the bait it's like a sting right so i want to say the deceit is um it's like you you have to continue to it's like collect information 
Because the thinking woman collects the information, right? She watches, she gathers information. But then you're being asked to be peaceful with this, to mend with it. So tell me about why the... Like, these two are very similar energies as well. Like, this is kind of like... The, it's, it's the end, right? It's kind of like the, the final blow coming in to end something. Tell me about... Tell me about this. I mean, you're definitely getting like a workplace energy coming through. Tell me about this side, please. I'm, I'm quiet because tr it's like they're trying to explain this to me. Um, so this is like not taking the bait, right? Not taking the cup. Because you want to secretly take the cup later is the way it's coming through. It's like the cup is for you, but you don't want to be seen to take it. So it's like if you hold back, like it's like it's coming through Taurus, like you want the cheese. But you're well aware that if you go directly for the cheese, <laughs> that... Um, it's like you're going to be, it's almost like this is the mousetrap or something, right? It's like you're going to be caught in the mousetrap because you're going to be seen to seen to have done it, right? So you have to look like you're not interested. But then you do get it, right? It, do, it does come in, but hidden and secretively. Or you've got some fears about taking something. Like the 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 cup should be um, a relationship or new feelings or uh, something that is like your heart's involved in it, right? It's kind of like this outpouring of emotion. But right now you have to strategize. You can't. It's like you can't show you want it. Is the way it's coming through. I hope that makes sense. Um, I'm going to get some more cards for you. I want to know um, what is spirit helping you with at this time feel like you've got a challenge on your hands it it does feel to me a little bit like um a situation where you know right say you're in a certain workplace and it makes me think of that whole thing that came out with like uh like capricorn and leo a while back um and it's kind of like you know a situation where maybe you're in a certain workplace and it's like you know like you know it's almost like the the son of the boss or something like that or like you know the CEO or, you know, so, someone who's kind of quite high up in the company. It's like, you know, they're doing something really bad. Like maybe they're stealing from the pension fund or something, right? Maybe they're, you know, it's like they're lining their own pockets and thinking they're getting away with it. I've just watched the It Crowd, right? Where, um, you know, Denim has been messing with the pension fund. It's funny that that came up before. So it's like you, it's like you're in the workplace and you know that something's going down, Right. But you're kind of pretending that you don't and you're kind of letting it happen. Because maybe it's like, you know, you want a certain promotion. But you don't want to go for the promotion because, I don't know, maybe you get implicated in it or something. It's like you don't want to get involved with it. Because it's like you don't want to get caught up in when this happens, you don't want to get caught up in it, right? You don't want to you don't want to be involved in that. So even though you're kind of complicit because you do know it's going on, it's like you're also aware that, okay, you've not got any involvement in it. Or or it's like maybe maybe you, you're kind of like part of the sting. I don't know. Okay, what is spirit helping you with? It's very cloak and dagger. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. What is spirit helping Taurus with, please? You're definitely being encouraged to think, right? You're definitely being encouraged to be more, be softer, be more strategic, be very forgiving, bring your heart into the situation. And I did say the moon, right? I did say the moon is feminine as opposed to the, the sun that's masculine. You've got the sun and yang and the moon and yin. So, like, bring more water, bring more emotion, bring more um, empathy into the situation yeah there you go mother rose and play have fun celebrate don't be so serious why so serious 
uh, returning to each other, compassion, humanity, right? As I was saying, have more empathy, right? Have more compassion and then play, have fun, celebrate, don't be so serious. Like, I love it. She's like Dita Montes. Um, Okay. So this is the Rose Tarot, the Rose Oracle, um, Mother Rose. This, and, and it's over here with the feminine, right? The sacred symbol of the feminine, the rose, has been here much longer than us. In times ancient, garlands of roses were placed around statues of mother goddesses in worship of her. We are all her children. She connects and unites us all. If we trace her roots far enough, maybe we'll find our own way to each other. We're living in a time of great division, right? What we were talking about, learning and unlearning. And here's the thinking woman with the learning. We're together mending the thread of humanity. This is a card of returning to union by facing what's been broken, separated and severed, to realize that we're all human. And while harm has been done, what's needed now is for us to acknowledge what's happened and endeavor to find a way to return to each other, to realize that it's possible for two people to have, dif have a different experience at the same time and that both can be, be true, right? It doesn't, we don't have to be in conflict. We don't have to argue. We don't have to fight we can collaborate and work together and you know just be good people and elevate right be more be more thoughtful and conscious and less animalistic and fearful and greedy right um, Mother Rose longs for humanity to drop our defenses and reach out to each other with deep honesty and compassion to face and untangle the sadness, anger and hurt from our hearts with the help of her grace, to dig our roots deep until we find common ground. What relationships are difficult for you now? Who has hurt you? How can you soften and express your truth without being defensive? How can you open yourself up to the possibility that tr two truths can exist at once? Uh, Rose transmission. So this is like an affirmation. I'll bring it up and show you. You can read it at the same time if you like. Mother Rose, please show us how to find our way back to you, the earth, and to each other. Please help me to acknowledge what's been difficult for me, and may my heart be filled with compassion for all. You know, not just for the few, compassion for the all. And I think that gets harder when we're scared. And who makes us scared? The media makes us scared, right? The people, you know, the people who are giving us the news, the people who are often in collaboration with the government or in, with the people who have power, um, there's a political um, strategy called Waves of Fear. You can look this up. It's, it's a bit tricky to kind of find it, but there's a really good YouTube video on it. I think uh, maybe it's by like After School, I want to say it's called. Um, it's like an animated thing, but Waves of Fear. So it's a political tactic. And basically, um, you find it a lot in tyrannical systems. So I'm not saying any specific country, any specific political party, but throughout history, uh, you will find the use of this tactic. And it's designed to keep a population scared and easily controlled. Um, so um, it's like you want to keep people scared and stupid, basically, if you're tyrannical. Because uh, you don't want people questioning what you're doing or organising themselves and kind of like you know, squaring off against you, you know. So um, what you do if you're a horrible politician and you want to control a population, um, you know, I'm hearing you keep keep it simple, stupid. So you get um, uh, oligarchs and uh, what's the word, demagogues, um, who will um, basically like think about like news channels where it's like this really scary things happened. Oh, my God, we're all under threat. What are we going to do? Ah, panic. As I say, this is big sirens going off um, and everybody panics, right? And when you go into a panic state, when you go into the fear because of the news as it's being presented to you, um, your rational thought goes, right? You start getting more of the edge. You start getting instinctive. You know, you have knee-jerk responses. Oh my God, we're being attacked. Attack them first, right? Attack them harder. It's a knee-jerk, animalistic fear response. Um, and so what often happens, and you can watch this yourself, you can look out for it um, and watch the waves and watch the pattern. So there'll be a big scary news story. And within, say, the next two weeks or so, you start to get the experts coming in, right? You can start to get the people who, who have the knowledge and who have the learning and have the experience. The people who 
who bring thought, right, who bring logic to the situation and they calm people down and they say, look, this is what we know. This is what we don't know. These are the facts. You know, this, this, you know, it seems scary on the surface, but when we actually break it down, you know, in a logical fashion, you know, it's, it's not as bad as we first thought, right? It's not as bad as that first news story made us fear. Um, but by the time the population is starting to settle and starting to get into the thought, the thinking, you know, the fear is going, so the thoughts are coming, um, you know, there'll be a different news story, something else terrible is happening in the news, or it's a distraction piece with some celebrity who's done something awful. It's like, look, let's cancel them. I can't believe that celebrity that we all love did that awful thing, you know, and it's designed to provoke either a fear or anger response, which is animalistic because there's no thoughts, right? Like the thoughts slide right off the brain is smooth when we're in that thought process so yeah like i say it's a tactic that corrupt uh governments corrupt news stations corrupt people who have power will hold on to power in a tyrannical way by using this uh method of waves of fear scary news story everybody panic you know, get them all to agree to what we want them to agree to. By the time the experts come out, it's too late. We've got we've got our own way, right? Oh no, they're thinking of themselves again. Another news story, scare them. So it's exactly why I think, in my personal opinion, is the day before the children were meant to go back to school after the summer holidays, a news article broke that said the schools are falling down, it's bad concrete, all your kids are going to die, right? And like maybe they didn't explicitly say, the, you know, the school's going to cave down, your kids are going to be trapped in these concrete buildings because, oh my God, they're not safe, right? But it was implied and that's what people took from it and that's what people got scared about, right? And so, um, you know, because, you know, all these parents are like, oh, we've got to go back to work. Kids are going back to school. It's like, oh, they're a bit too comfortable. Let's shake, shake them all up. So I don't know. It's something to watch out for. So um, what do we do when, when we're being scared, when uh, the world's a scary place and, you know, bad people are enjoying making us fear the worst? How do we combat that? Have fun. Don't be so serious. Play make comedy, make dark jokes about it, right? It takes the power away from the tyrants. Um, so have fun, celebrate, don't be so serious. Let's have a read of it. I gotta find it first. Like humor is such a huge tool for people who don't have power to challenge power. It's like, if something's scary, and, you know, if someone, like, in my, think again, think about being in the office and the boss comes in, right, the CEO of the company and everybody's scared and they come in and they go, shout at everybody and they say, and everybody's like, oh God, I hope I don't get fired. Like, you know, they leave the room, you all start making jokes about them and kind of like doing impressions of them. It, it eases the mood and it makes them less scary. And what if people start to do that to the person's face? Think of teachers, right? Think of like a tyrannical teacher and all it takes is for one joker in the group to kind of like challenge their authority. Everybody else starts getting involved. You know, before you know it, that teacher's lost control of the classroom because the kids haven't took them seriously. And so fear is used as a tool to control Comedy is used as a tool to rebel. You're being told to play. Stop taking life so seriously. Your spirit needs to have some fun. The more you play, the more it's, it's you taking your power back, right? It's you refusing to be scared and cowed into submission. The more you play, the more inspiration will follow. Take some time out to do something without being attached to the outcome. You are being called to rest and play, to learn and have more fun. They don't want you to do that. They want you to be working hard, living paycheck to paycheck, hand to mouth, because you're in the fear, right? When you're doing that, you're in the fear, you're controllable, you're not thinking for yourself, right? You're going through the motions. Take a break, have some fun, get a perspective. Um, do something that makes you laugh, the best medicine around. Call up a friend that you can be silly with. Take your inner child on a date. The more you switch off your mind, the more room you have for spirit to whisper and guide. When we do things without being attached to the outcome, ideas, clarity and guidance and solutions have the space to drop in. The left and right hemispheres of the brain, we've been talking about that, can begin talking to each other, the emotional and the logical, right? The emotional fear or uh, needs based, right? And then the logical, uh, let's have a bit of thought, like, and a bit of perspective on this. 
make a compulsory part of your day, schedule it. Make play a compulsory part of your day, schedule it. Spend more time doing things just because you love to do them, just because they bring you joy and light you up. If you follow what lights you up, you will fill, you will, your light will fill up the world without even trying. But when you are lit up, when you are in spirit and when you are, when you, hang on, when you are in your spirit, you fall into the flow with life. How do you play? How do you have fun? What lights you up? If you've been working hard lately, it's time, working hard lately, Taurus, all work and no play makes Taurus a dull boy, girl person. Um, it's time to celebrate how far you've come, all that you've achieved. Don't rush on to the next thing. Take a moment to throw a party, go on vacation or have some fun. It's funny because you were told not to go on vacation there. I don't know. Take it as it resonates. You'll know what you'll know what it means to you. Have more fun, play more, celebrate your achievements. Good advice. Let's see which spirit guides are knocking around and helping you out. So this particular deities and goddesses and things on these cards. Don't worry too much if it's not a specific um culture that you are familiar with if it is if it's a specific deity and you think oh my god that's my guide right take it um otherwise it could even be somebody who resembles somebody that you know in real life that spirit is working through at this time to help you out you know so it could be like that kind neighbor who always has you know an encouraging word or you know take it as it resonates you should you should know who this is for you um who is helping taurus at this time who is helping Taurus at this time? I'm hearing who's got your back. It's like this person has your back. Uh, Goddess Kuan Yin, again, very, very feminine. Um, and she looks like a comedian. She learned the, the gig. Like, you can look her up if you want. It's a, 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 that's a funny card to me. Gateway, legacy, and opening. You could have someone around you who's a little bit crude. Funny and crude. And it's like they're lighting you up. It's feeling comedian. Maybe you just need to watch a funny female comedian who's, like, a bit ra raunchy. Um... Goddess Kuan Yin, compassion, kindness, and divine mercy. All very good values. And look at all the roses. Look at all the yin energy. It's absolutely gorgeous. Like, this is what we need more of in this world at this time, I think. You know, compassion. Um, what is it? Kindness, compassion, and design, divine mercy. And divine mercy is like, I have the power, right? I have the power to punish, but I also have the power to forgive. And both of those things are powerful. Neither one takes from the other, right? It's not, it's not the, the, I have to throw my weight around in order to feel powerful. It's like, I, my power comes in my compassion. And uh, some advice, please, for Taurus at this time. You can see why I found the last reading problematic, though, hopefully. Uh, be bold and make the first move. Cardinal Moon, it's like back to Yang energy. How does that even make sense? You can be bold in feminine energy. It has got a moon. Cardinal Moon. Cardinal Moon. It's like uh, take the lead in the feminine way. So let me explain this a different way. So don't worry about your sex or your gender orientation, that kind of thing. Um, take it as energy. So you are both... Uh, Parts of you carry both the emperor and the empress energy. You get to choose. Like, do you step into the shoes of the emperor or do you step into the shoes of the empress? Both of them are perfectly capable of, you know, achieving what they want to achieve, leading a team, uh, taking control of the lives, but they have different methods. While the emperor is a much is much more sun yang energy, much more this is this is what I want to do, get on board, you know, this is my idea, this is my strategy, everybody follow me. Um, you know, the, the, the feminine energy, the empress energy is more, what does everybody think? You know, just look at the TV shows like The Apprentice, you know, when they split them into like the guys and the girls, like the way that they go about it a lot of the time. I mean, they pick a lot of awful people, so maybe I've not picked the most brilliant example. But, you know, the women will spend some time talking about it. They'll hear out everybody else's ideas. Um, you know, they'll say, like, let's take a vote. Which idea do we think is best? So it's a more... Um, it's just a more yin energy. Um, and it's giving Libra as well. I don't know. Libra is a very politi pol political um, sign. Um, you know, they are the negotiator of the Zodiac. And uh, like you, they're also ruled by Venus. But they are a cardinal sign. So where you're a feminine sign, Libra is a masculine sign. So Libra knows how to take the lead in light, light, like this, right? Um, 
like a mother like a good mother um so yeah i don't know make of it what you will uh it'll either resonate or it won't don't force it to fit i hope it was helpful have a really good party season and i will see you in the new year right remember more of this take care taurus bye